Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at how to identify, draw and name alkenes. Now alkenes are definitely a bit more interesting than alkanes. To name them, we work on a very similar principle to naming alkanes. But the infix, the middle part of the name, has an en rather than an an which shows that there's a double bond present in the longest carbon chain. And we have to have a number in that name to show where the double bond is in the molecule. For example, if you've got a four carbon molecule, the double bond could be in several places within that molecule. So we need to show where it is because the different locations of that double bond will lead to different properties for the molecule. So, similarly, when we come to draw alkenes, we draw them in a very similar way to drawing alkanes, but we need to include a double bond. And we need to have, for every double bond that's there, there are two less hydrogens that can be um, drawn into the molecule. So the general formula is always CnH2n, so twice as many hydrogens as carbons. Um, whenever we're drawing molecules, and it doesn't matter what sort of molecule we're drawing, it's always important to remember that carbon will have four bonds. Hydrogen will only ever have one bond. So will fluorine, chlorine and bromine. If you ever draw a hydrogen that has two bonds on it, your molecule is wrong. If you have a carbon that has three or five bonds, it is wrong. Um, oxygen will always have two bonds. Unless it has one bond and a negative charge. Similarly, nitrogen will have three bonds, or it can have four bonds with a positive charge. So like ammonium. Okay. So let's have a look at the drawing and naming of some alkenes. So let's start off with a molecule like this. And let's imagine that we've got to name this thing. Okay. Just bear with me. So remember, carbon always has four bonds. So I'm making sure that all my carbon atoms have four bonds around them. Now with this carbon that I've just drawn the hydrogen on, it already has two bonds of the double bond, one bond to the other carbon, so it only gets one hydrogen. And the end carbon... The terminal carbon and it gets two hydrogens because it has another two bonds from the double bond. So when it comes to naming it, we're going to count how long the longest carbon chain is first. And I'm a big fan of drawing a box around that longest carbon chain. There are four carbons in there, so we're going to call it but. Now, if I number this carbon chain, one I'll go away. Two, three, and four. Whatever. The double bond is between carbons one and two. So we're going to name it but one an. Okay, N because it's got a double bond, 1 because the double bond is between carbons 1 and 2. Okay, let's have a look at something slightly more complicated. Yeah, a second or three to get rid of this bit. Okay, so if we have something slightly more complicated... That's a three, just in case you can't tell. I 
I know my writing on this screen is not very neat. But hopefully you can figure out what I'm trying to do here anyway. Okay. So we have this molecule. We're going to name the longest carbon chain. So we'll find it. Here it is. Five carbons long. Five carbons is pent. There is a double bond. It is between carbons two and three on that chain. So we're going to put a two. And then we're going to put the ene. Okay, we also have this CH3 group here. CH3 is one carbon, so that is meth. No, not like the drug. Isle, because it's a side chain. And it is attached to carbon 3 on that chain. So we're going to put a 3 at the start. 3 methyl pent 2 ene. Okay. If we have to name a molecule, if we have to draw a molecule from a name, I actually think that's almost easier. Because let me show you why I think it's almost easier. If we come up with a nice long and complicated name, we'll see how we go about drawing that. Okay, so we're going to have two, three, dimethyl, hept, <coughs> excuse me, one, ene. Okay, whenever I'm going to draw this, I'm going to start with this bit, the longest carbon chain. It's going to tell me I need seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. I love drawing on a screen, eh? Six, seven. Okay, you know. Now, hept one ene means that between carbons one and carbon two, there is a carbon carbon double bond. On carbon two and carbon three, so methyl means a one carbon group. Di means there's two of them, and 2, 3 tells me where they're located. So on carbon 2, and on carbon 3, there are these one carbon groups. Oh. Let me just see if I can make this slightly neater, because I don't think it likes my writing very much. Okay. Now, for methyl groups particularly, I tend to write them as CH3 because it's easier. I'm also going to put the extra hydrogens on. So that carbon has two bonds already. The next one already has four. The next one has three, so I'm going to put a hydrogen on there. And then I'm just going to fill in my remaining hydrogens. Okay, the CH3... 
is a much easier way a lot of the time to write it. Please bear with my really crappy drawing on the screen, okay? A couple of things to be really careful of, and even with this crappy screen, I'm doing that. First one is when you have a side group like this, the bond must be between the two carbons. It's not from the carbon to the hydrogen, okay? The bond does not go like this. You draw the bond like that blue line, and you will be marked wrong in your exam. Because the bond does not go between the carbon and the hydrogen. It goes between the carbon and the carbon. And that is a really, really important thing to have. Okay, so drawing molecules is pretty straightforward. But you must, must, must be careful. Okay, they are easy achieved points if you are careful. If you are not careful, then it is a massively wasted opportunity. Okay. That's all I've got to say for today. Next video, I will talk to you about the reactions of alkenes. And that is a whole other story on its own.